Okay, welcome once again, audience. Sorry for the audio glitches you might hear along the way. Um, joining me today is Jason Johnson. Um, and yes, yeah, so we're going to be talking through the ins and outs of of website design. Yeah, welcome, Jason, to, to the talk. Um, glad you could be here. Thanks for having me. Mm. Um, hopefully you can enlighten us in an easy at least easy to understand way about um, website design and what really goes into what what any website really should go through so hypothetical example just to make it a mm. bit easier um, sure so say you are a, a big company that mm -hmm. does um, you sell products you put out blog articles um, and that's about it but a lot of traffic goes to your website and you want people to actually um, find your your website either uh -huh. through social media that you put out yes. on Facebook or whatever and you also want discoverability if people search for your company's thing of selling products and blog posts or if they put that in the search box then they get re results and you get advertised as well in those results as well as you want ads to be displayed whenever people search other things after that search as ads so yes building a site like that what would be needed yeah but say you um, do have the money to spend and say you do have the recommended number of people are uh, recommended yes. what would each department need to be doing okay yeah so so team wise you look at a graphic designer for the they would mock up the layouts um they would then hand it to a front-end developer um, or ux designer as we call them yeah you have um, it managers or hosts that would handle the database and often that's that would be off-site that would be a uh, you know kind of some hosting company hmm. and then you have a back-end developer for all the server-side processing and then you would have uh, the digital marketing teams that would handle your, your social side of things and then you'd have your SEO specialist which would handle how to um, they, would, they would map out how best to get you to rank high on the search engines and then they would often relate to, to get into the graphic designers and to your um, developers because all of that's tied into together. You have to increase your performance uh, of your site. You have to um, create uh, good banners. And then also another section is content creation. So you would need yes. uh, probably blog writers, content writers. Writers, uh, yes. Yeah, for ads and for, for content, um, you know, writing the right content for your products, writing the right content for the services, and just making sure your spelling's right on your website, because all of that gets checked by, by the search engines. And so it all kind of ties them together and they all work together and, and, and often from several uh, uh, kind of suppliers or sources. Uh, that, that should cover most, I believe. Um, I do, yeah, and, and so I think that's why I recommend um, using some of these platforms. You know, if you're getting started with websites, um, depending on what your kind of focus is, you can get by a, a, with a lot with using some of these uh, platforms because that, that back-end development is, is handled for you. That hosting element is handled for you. Um, the front-end is made easier because it becomes a drag-and-drop um, system instead of trying to code in all those different languages and so if you're prepared to kind of just fit in what this, with what the systems provide such as what spark gives you or uh, wordpress.com or wix or uh, there's a few others uh, Net netify and um, webflow are, are two or recent ones which are really really taking off and really good and really nice environments to use so if you if you want to kind of get past a lot of that then and focus on just making your, the front end look good and getting your content done, then these handle a lot of that other side for you. And, and then you can focus on, on, on getting your content and getting your products and getting to look a little better on, on the front side. And all those other, they have places to, to link in with your Google ads and your, and your tracking. 
all done for you instead of having to build that in all the time. And so that's why, why you know, I'd recommend that um, you know, for a very low subscription fee that these things have, you do cut out a lot of that you know, legwork, whereas otherwise you have to hire an agency or have a large company that has all these resources existing already. Um, so that's, that's kind of our thinking around it. The thing is as well um, that I appreciate about that recommendation is it's more it, it's a lot easier these days to change the functionality of a website even if it is one of these sites that have a very basic website builder function and you just rent a domain mm. um, especially with integration on social media aspects of it where it basically allows you to forget about the server load and forget about the infrastructure of your actual system running everything um, yes. it's only where you come into where you're basically bigger international companies um, where your content is more important than the website you're hosting and mm. stealing information is kind of a, a no-no and you don't want that to happen <laughs> it actually also negatively affects your search rankings um, because the more the bigger more popular site will be seen as the original source and your copy will then yes. negatively affect you so there's, there's things to consider there the, the most important things then are, are that your content is original and then people see your site as having value irrespective of who's hosting or where it is um, that's why the Kardashians can host a Shopify website and get high rankings on, on, on their search results because of who they are and the, their marketing and their branding um, not so much where the site is. My understanding of websites are, is very limited, um, but I know of a couple of, of places that you can get websites very easily going. Um, like you get a lot of ads for Wix and Squarespace on YouTube, um, mm -hmm. not sponsored yet, but hopefully. Um, so one of these days. Um, and yeah, so I think the best way for me to explain what I think is an easy way to start a website is trying to do introduce trying to introduce Adobe Spark is a very interesting tool. Um, if you go to the website just Adobe Spark, you would get interesting thing so it's more on the thing of teaching tools as far as i understand um it is a subscription service but yeah so this is the easiest thing i can think of for website building um pricing shouldn't be that bad but it depends on how easily you want to adapt this thing i already have an account so if i wanted to create something i can make social posts I can create websites yeah. and short videos as well um, and it looks to be easy so if I wanted to create a web page like this it would give me templates it would give me it would give me options on where what type of things and it's like a very guided process on how to do these things but they give you a wide variety of things where that you can use and customize creating a new um, web page like this uh -huh. is um, interesting to me because it works basically like a PowerPoint presentation so Um, and subtitle then you just basically add more content um, just basically add so you can get anywhere you can take it it looks like they want to go to unsplash but I'm just gonna put this down and then this is basically part of the website thing so it works basically like you would do any website with sections to each site but mm -hmm. in the way that you can present it or preview your creation
creation just like that and it's already everything is built pre-built for you in a sort of modern-esque way um nice. and you you have your settings obviously but they're 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 very limited um in in how much you can change so this is for basic presentation and basic information sharing so let's go a bit deeper jason so you know a lot more about websites than i do um <laughs> so yeah take it away okay great thanks for the, the demo on spark um it's something that uh, I, I definitely had heard about but i wasn't quite sure what it all entailed um and i know it's, it's one of the newer um offerings from adobe and it does tie in a little bit about what I want to talk about when it comes to websites. So coming from a, a web development and design background, websites are pretty much what we do, what I do. And you can plug yourself, don't worry. You can really like robotdorf.com. Uh, no, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> can really be like from the smallest ad. to the largest. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, this video is not sponsored by the way so. <laughs> so yeah so websites are what we do and we've seen kind of seen them all from the, the smallest to the biggest and everything in between and the main thing that or well, the main question that we'd ask people and that um, I'd ask you and, and, the, and the, anyone viewing this is why do you want a website? What is the purpose behind it? What, what are you hoping to do with the website? It kind of falls into a few categories. Everything from uh, maybe you want a personal website, maybe you want something that's, that you can put ideas on, put thoughts on, perhaps something like a blog, uh, or perhaps you, you want a place to put your podcasts, uh, have something like a SoundCloud, or you want a place to put videos, and then you know, maybe like a YouTube channel. I like this particular one that's really really nice Thank or <laughs> perhaps uh, you want to sell something maybe you want to maybe you want you have a product and you want to sell that product or a service and perhaps you you have a business and you just want to have a, a kind of an online presence that people can find you yeah. and so it could be like in any or multiple of these things and there's different ways that you can then accomplish these goals, um, or perhaps you actually have a particular service that you that you need to um, provide online, uh, perhaps like an e-learning tool or something like that, and that's where it gets maybe a bit more advanced. Before you think about designing a website or or, or how it's going to look or what you want to do, you need a you need a domain, a .com or a .org or a .net or a apparently a .video or some any other random word you can think of it could have a dot in front of it they used to kind of just be your countries so dot com or dot or dot uk and so on and so forth they've now got a few others and uh, you can't pretty much get a dot anything and and so you, you have to have it and it helps people know who you are remember you um it's something that you can call your own it's your own space and on top of that it's really cheap to get so well, my first recommendation is before you get to the websites, get a domain and get your own emails hosted on that domain. And you can then work from there. And for an example, a very simple service is uh, Google Apps for Business. As I said, so for $10 a month, you get uh, email with your own domain name, um, unlimited uh, space for that. You also get unlimited Google Drive storage access to Google Calendar, um, unlimited Google Meet um, meetings, um, Google Docs, including, and Google Sheets. So if you start a company or you have a company and you want to move online, then G, G Suite can handle all of kind of your business um, admin side of things. And then all your emails and your storage can go through Google, Google uh, G Suite. On top of that, if you need to have a system where you need to get information from uh, users, this also comes with a, a built-in feature called Google Forms, where you can actually build forms up that, that 
that people can enter, whether it's a get in touch or whether it's a survey mm. um, that you want to have for your business. And then it saves that into your Google Docs and you can also then generate emails and things from that as well. So it all links together. Uh, we use it in our, in our business and yeah, so the, the, the business version gives you a lot um, for all $10 a month. And that's what I have open in front of me now. And again, unlimited uh, storage space. So you, um, nice. which is not bad, just for, for $10. Then, um, there are, as I said, quite a few platforms moving to this whole no code movement um, to help you get started with a website. And again, you don't, it all depends what you want to do. You could actually just have a Facebook page and sell things off there as well um, if you just wanted to get started. There's also, um, if you want to start an online store, then, or, or a simple website, then as you mentioned earlier, there's platforms such as Wix where you can uh, create a website entirely online and purchase a domain from them so then they can host a website on a domain such as uh, you know, um, wbcvideo.com. Um, but they also then connect with G Suite in the background to create the domain and the emails and itself. So Exactly, so they can be linked to, to that. And so you'd run your emails from G Suite and your website would be sitting on Wix. And again, it looks a lot better than, and I recommend purchasing, because it looks a lot better than the free version, which will be, again, sugarbiscuits134.wix.com. You don't want that. You want straight you, sugar biscuits out of the box. Absolutely. And so again, just let that be the, the deciding factor with everything you do is you, you rather want your own name on the things. Then uh, the alternatives to Wix. So Wix is just one of many, it, it, probably one of the first ones that really started marketing. Yes. If you want to get a li little bit more uh, advanced and also slightly different, uh, there's WordPress.com. So we build our systems in a platform called WordPress. According to me, WordPress is kind of the bread and butter of what most websites are built on um, in the, the small to mid-range business size where it's very easy for coders to access and it's very easy for clients to update it regularly. Yes, and it's becoming even easier with, with new, uh, what they call plugins that allow you to, to kind of build it using, like you saw on Spark with sections. And, and as you say, 36% of the web is currently built on WordPress. And WordPress.com is, is, the, is, the, the, is a hosted version of WordPress. So it's where you don't have to go into the, the trouble of registering your own domain separately and purchasing your own separate hosting environment. Um, and then you build the site and upload it to there because that can get technical and difficult. This is where it's all built up for you, similar to the way Wix is, and you then just build on their platforms. So that's the difference between WordPress.org and WordPress.com. So WordPress.com is the one where they host for you, like with Wix, and they are direct competitors with Wix. And you can then build on there and use with the use of plugins, both free and bought, you can then add more and more functionality to it. Um, one of the most popular ones is one called WooCommerce, which allows you to turn your, your straight website into an online store. Hmm. And you can then grow with that. And again, it's all built in and you have 24 hour support. Um, and again, you can have it with your own custom domain. So it won't be sugarbiscuit.wordpress.com, but it will be sugarbiscuit.com, for example. Similar to that, if you want to go uh, e-commerce, then you can use a platform such as Shopify, which uh, allows you, again, to build an online store on their platform. And it's really catered for online stores and handles the ability to set up taxes and shipping and multiple products. And again, it will help you to build it so that it works across all your devices. And so all the things that you would need a developer for, you can now just get a template and add your products and you're in business within a, in a day. Nice. Very so, nice. so that's really good for if you want if you have products that you want to sell. Yeah. Um, I, I, instead of putting them on Facebook, you can put them on your own platform on Shopify. Mm. And a lot of people uh, make quite a bit of cash uh, with this. And I mean, it can, I believe some of the Kardashians actually have a Shopify site. They don't even have their own websites. <laughs> so it doesn't, you know, no matter how rich or poor you are, 
yeah. this Shopify can work for you. Uh, I'm just going to highlight just two uh, others. Um, one is called Notion, Notion, which is really good for blogging. Uh, so yes, it's really good for blogging and for uh, kind of putting your ideas out there and and doing it with the keys. And so that that's a, a new one, and it has a bit of a website built in it. So Notion's a good one that's new and has been used a lot. Another one is Medium, that's really for blog posts. You can really write, you sign up with Medium and then you can just write uh, blog posts on Medium. And uh, then if you want to get a newsletter out, then I recommend MailChimp. MailChimp is one we've used a lot and it allows you to design and build uh, newsletters. And with that, they've actually, because everyone's doing it, they've expanded into allowing you to create a web page as well um, with your own domain and then be able to send newsletters from there as well and link them all together. And so that's a great one. And again, that was very, very pricing and service offerings. But MailChimp is really good for that. And then also allows you to do A-B testing on your websites and on your newsletters. And so you, you kind of work with some of these platforms together and you can do a lot in the digital space. And then only if you really need something very custom that, you know, I suppose the thing with all of these is these are the platforms and you have to kind of fit in with what they're doing and, and adjust what you want to do to match yes. the templates. Um, if you want something truly custom, then you, you have to go that route and then the costs get more expensive, the costs rise, but you then get exactly what you need. Uh, and that's kind of why people would call someone like us because we would not do these um, kind of websites, but we would do custom solutions. Mm. Yes. And uh, that's where you would probably have to get a, a, a digital agency involved. But a lot of people can manage um, with just these systems. And that's why they're gaining popularity because for a very low price, you can get something up very quickly. And when you get the capital to customize it, once you've made some sales, then you can go that route. But uh, there's one amazing company that we heard of um, that that's started, um, it was two people that, that uh, started a company together. And for the first two years, they ran everything via Google Forms and Google Sheets until they had enough capital to build their own system from there. Oh, okay. A lot of what people say they want um, might also come with the caveat of they got inspired by it from a video on YouTube. Um, or they got inspired yes. by other people and other websites and they want the same type of shine and sleekness to something. Um, and yeah, I would, I would also like say maybe wait before anything um, because sometimes people chase the, the, the status feeling of, of um, using very fancy maneuvers for very basic things. And, and in websites, you find that a lot of these websites aren't really functional in terms of how much you interact with it. Um, but the most functional websites look the most basic because they, they figured out what they're actually selling and how much people will actually spend time on the website. Yeah, and I think then, you know, also just maybe the last, I think from my side is just how, whether you're a single person by yourself or, or a massive company, um, you can pour a whole bunch of resources into building a massive website or system, and you don't know if it's going to work or not. Um, with a lot of these, you can almost use it as a test, run a prototype, you know, test the waters, get something up out there, and then, and, you know, as a, even if you're a massive corporate company, you can try one of these try an idea out, see if it works or not, and then expand it from there. Instead of taking months or years to develop something really large and massive and then fine, it doesn't work or it's, or it's missed the, the target. Um, and so there is, I see a lot of value in, in these platforms. As I said, for very low cost, you can really get something looking amazing that you couldn't do a couple of years ago and that you can do now. Um, and so, I mean, we, we in the business of web development, but we highly recommend, you know, people try these things out because um, it just, otherwise the cost and barrier to entry is just way higher. Um, and, and, but now it's just been brought lower by these, by these platforms. Yeah. Um, and I think it is also, 
I don't know in terms of how it's changed business, but it's it's definitely made um, smaller businesses more accessible to a larger audience. Um, definitely. And especially, I think it broadened what you would define as local. Um, mm. Because instead of local being just the people you see every day, it's now people in your city or people in your mm. province or even bigger because local could be the whole country now um, yes um, yeah so thank you um, Jason for the very quick uh, run through of the entire science of websites um, I really appreciate it um, no, thank you for the opportunity yeah no, anytime um yeah, so thank you once again, Jason. Um, it's been great chatting, uh, like I said. And yeah, uh, thank you, audience, for joining in. And see you next time.